The power of chonk is a beautiful thing. It'll make one man weep and another man sing. And if you've got Huey Lewis in the news stuck in your head, you're welcome. But what is the power of chunk and how does one harness its power? These are the questions that Height wants to answer with their technology harnessing innovative chunk for cooling or thick Q60 AIO. Can this extra girthy AIO go toe to toe in cooling performance with the most popular 360 millimeter AIOs? Is it time for us to get down with the thickness? Well, we're about to find out right here, right now on Robitech. As a connoisseur of dad jokes, I respect Height's calculated decision to lean into the memes when they introduce the thick Q60. But as funny as the name and the silly acronym sound, this AIO is actually no joke. Height didn't just cobble together an AIO with bigger components to stick the landing on a joke. This AIO is feature packed and it has an ambitious goal to deliver 360 millimeter AIO performance in a 240 millimeter ish form factor. If a first look tells us anything about the Q60, it's that everything about this AIO is massive. The fans, the radiator, the operating range, heck, even the LCD on the pump head is unlike anything we've ever seen. Now we're getting a bit ahead of ourselves. This is an AIO review, not an advertisement for the thick Q60. So we're gonna pick it apart, talk about the pros and cons, and then we'll talk about what kind of PC build this dummy thick AIO would actually fit inside. Let's begin looking at the pricing and where it falls within the current market. With a starting price of $299.99, the height thick Q60 is not a traditional 240 millimeter AIO by any means. It's in a class of its own. But to keep things simple with pricing, when we look at the landscape of 240 millimeter AIOs, the Q60 has some price competition with NZXT's Kraken Elite 240, as well as juggernauts like the Asus ROG Ryujin 3 at $330. If we compare prices with 360 millimeter AIOs, the thick Q60 still falls within a premium price range. Even in a different size bracket, Q60 has competition with AIOs like the Corsair IQ Link H150i LCD at $319.99 and the 360mm Ryujin 3 at $339.99. So whether you're looking at 240 or 360mm AIOs, the thick Q60 is one expensive AIO. Now let's talk about why that's the case though. As the name implies, the thick Q60 has extra thick fans and an even thicker radiator. Starting with the fans, the thick Q60 comes equipped with two 120mm thick FP12 fans with a girth of 32 millimeters. That's pretty thick when you consider that the most popular fans like Corsair's IQ Link QX fans and Noctua's NFA12s are only actually 25 millimeters thick. The FP12s aren't necessarily unique at that size. We've seen fans like Fantex's T30s and D30s that are 30 millimeters thick, as well as the newly released Corsair thicker RS Max fans as well. The thick FP12 fans have a max speed of up to 3000 RPM, providing an airflow rate of 105.8 CFM. Now, when we visited Height at CES, they had a wall of these fans that were cranked to see how much air they could move. And yep, they can move some air and some hair. One thing to keep in mind is that these fans come pre-installed on radiators for air intake. So if you plan to top mount this radiator, which you'd be hard pressed to find a case that you could, but we'd recommend if you do to flip them around, which is super easy. And we're gonna show you a little bit about that later on. But the thick Q60 isn't just about the fans. Don't get me wrong. Fans are vital to an AIO's success. It can make or break just how good they are at cooling. But to earn the right to carry a name like thick, you have to do better than just fans. Oh, and Height did just that. The radiator on the AIO is monstrous. It's 52 millimeters thick. That's just over two inches of thickness, making it quite literally thicker than a Snickers, which is hard to say. When you consider that most standard AIOs measure around 27 millimeters for their rad, that is hefty. It even beats the Arctic Cooler Liquid Freezer 3 38 millimeter radiator by a significant amount. As for the pump head supporting the system, the motor head itself has an operating range of 2000 to 4500 RPM paired with a modestly sized 56 millimeter by 56 millimeter cold plate in two places on the radiator. What isn't modestly sized is the five inch IPS display on the Q60. With a resolution of 720 by 1280, 300 nits of brightness and a 60 Hertz refresh rate, the Q60 has one of the most ridiculous and awesome displays that we've seen on an AIO. But what's even more impressive is that this little, this little screen is a 64 bit quad core ARM core tech CPU. It has two gigabytes of DDR4 RAM, 32 gigs of storage, 
and its own graphics engine. Essentially, it's like having a mini Android phone inside of your PC that's sole purpose is to play RobyCat videos. I'm kidding, of course, but it can do a whole lot more than that thanks to the Hype Nexus software. Nexus, though, is more than just RGB controls and screen modifications. It is a truly comprehensive hardware support software that offers an overview of PC health and usage, fan control and programming with a unique visual programming language for your fan curves, cloud syncing with other devices like lighting modules, as well as a host of customizable options for yes, RGB and the Q60's massive LCD and support of course for the Y70 touchscreen as well. What's also cool about this is that Nexus offers a suite of widgets to help you keep track of system functions like CPU or GPU usage at an incredibly deep level. So if you feel like you need to track uh, your GPU power or CPU temps, you can absolutely do that. Unfortunately, you can only keep track of one sensor at a time and Height has done a really good job of making sure that you can visualize vital information without it looking boring. You can also add app integration for things like Discord messages or to show how long you've been looking at memes via a screen time app. Another thing we really actually like about the Nexus is that it offers universal hardware support. So they're adding support for devices outside of Height's actual ecosystems. Right now, Height has a list of nine keyboards, including the Razer Black Widow V3, Corsair's K100 RGB that can tie actually into the Nexus control. They even have a site where you can go and make suggestions on what you'd like to see supportive. It's a really bold move, but honestly, we're here for it. We're also here for the sound of light transcoding built into Nexus. If you have a bunch of RGB and you really wanna up your Christmas light game this year, Heights Nexus can sync some sweet holiday tunes. Or if you wanted to see kind of a funky colors RobyCat theme soft produced, Nexus can do that also. The software and display have some work and also it has its share of bugs. Things like lots of decimal places, truncating, We've also seen it crash on more than one occasion, but they are constantly working on it. There's a lot of potential here, but just know that it's early given that the Height Y70 Touch and the Q60 are kind of the flagship products that they're actually using it with. By the way, if you're enjoying this review, make sure that you go ahead and slap that subscribe button, whip that like button, and ring that notification bell so that you don't miss out on reviews like this one or other ones that are coming in the future. Speaking of the future, just kidding, let's actually look at the past to see how far back height goes with CPU support for the thick Q60. On the AMD side of things, the Q60 supports AM4 and AM5, but if you ask height nicely, like you're like, hello, height, they actually have brackets available for TR4 sockets. So, that's support for the entire Ryzen family, as well as some older Threadripper CPUs. As for Intel, the easier question to answer is what socket doesn't Q60 support? When it comes to modern Intel sockets, it covers LGA 1700, 1200, and 11.5X, as well as LGA 2011 and 2066. Again, if you ask nicely for the bracket. In case those numbers don't mean anything to you, that is a broad amount of support for Intel going back a number of generations, as well as some more recent Xeon processors. Now, you might be looking at the Q60 and saying, Roby, I don't see any cables coming off of the screen or anything like that. And come to think of it, I don't see any cables on the fans either. What sorcery is this? Don't worry, there is nothing arcane happening here. Much like Corsair's IQ Link, Height has designed the thick Q60 with magnetic data connections between the fans and the AIO. So if you need to flip the fans around, Height has made that incredibly easy. But where is the hub for all of this? Is it, is it on the radiator? That's right, Height actually built the Nexus hub into the radiator to save builders like you and me from having to deal with unsavory cable messes. With a single cable that comes off of the radiator, the Q60 has a USB two-point connector for data, a PWM controller cable to report fan speeds to the system, and a six-pin cable to connect to a PCI Express power cable. This is actually an important detail to be aware of, but we'll explain why in our closing thoughts. Now that we have a better picture of how the thick Q60 harnesses the chunk, it's time to see if the chunk can actually cool. At CPU idle, the thick Q60 averaged 31 degrees Celsius. These numbers put Height's AIO in line with the 360 millimeter Fantex Glacier 1D30. We look across the landscape of other 360 millimeter AIOs we've tested, this is on the warmer side of things, but the Q60 is in step with other 360 millimeter AIOs. Under CPU load, the story is actually very similar. The thick Q60 averaged temperatures of 72 degrees Celsius during the test, putting it right in line next to both the black and ARGB versions of the Arctic Cooling Liquid Freezer 3. Considering the cult following on the Liquid Freezer, that's actually a really good showing for the Q60. So again, 
it kept in step with 360 millimeter AIOs. And if you're wanting to know more about the Arctic Cooling Liquid Freezer, check out our full review right here. Now the story changed ever so slightly during our suite of game testing. With an average CPU temperature of 50 degrees Celsius, the height thick Q60 had one of the warmest temps among our 360 millimeter AIOs. That said, it wasn't far off from the 360 millimeter Glacier One, which averaged 49 degrees. So before we share our overall thoughts on the height thick Q60, how does it stack up in our relative value proposition? Remember how we do that? What we do is we take the CPU thermal max, which in this case is 100 degrees Celsius on a modern Intel CPU. We subtract the CPU temperature under load, then divide the retail price by that number. And what we get is at the dollars per degree of cooling value that then can be scored and compared against other AIOs. For the thick Q60, the value is 10.71, which is on the higher side of things. Now, the Q60 isn't the only AIO up there. The Asus ROG Ryujin 3 has a score of 10.63, and the Lian Li Galahad 2 LCD has a score of 9.3. That said, budget conscious, this, this whole thing is not. But what part of 720 by 1280, 60 hertz IPS display, full Android basically powered display, magnetic fans, all that sort of stuff sound actually budget to you. It didn't really sound budget to us either. But with the performance, fitment and everything else, when thinking about the AIO, it actually begs the question, where does this actually leave us? When we consider the whole picture, we have to answer the original question that we asked at the beginning. Can the thick Q60 compete with 360 millimeter AIOs? And the answer is yes, but that yes comes with some strings attached. Our benchmarks show that the thick Q60 performed really well under CPU load, but it hung out with the warmer 360 millimeter AIOs in both the gaming and idle tests. These temperatures weren't an extreme departure from how our other 360 millimeter AIOs performed at all. But it is actually worth noting that the performance is comparable. It's not better than the 360 millimeter experience. This is the best way I can put it. The Q60 is, it's like a young kid who really wants to play dodgeball with the older kids. Its size and skills help the Q60 hold its own among a field of bigger players. But one stray ball could cause, you know, it to be knocked out cold. But in this case, that knockout blow isn't actually a stray ball. It's the Q60's limitations. And some of this goes with the actual design. The actual pump itself is on the radiator. And I don't mean just one pump, there are actually two to help push liquid through that massive thick radiator. And unfortunately, because of this, it's also blocking airflow for those incredible fans that are included with the AIO, which is why we aren't seeing quite the 360 millimeter performance that height is actually promising. Here's what I'm getting at. The Q60 is capable-ish, but here are a few considerations you'll wanna make before picking the thick Q60 for your team. Thing number one, remember that the thick Q60 has both an extra thick radiator and extra thick fans. Together, you're looking at a combined thickness of 84 millimeters or around 3.3 inches of thickness. Whatever PC case you're gonna be looking to put this AIO in, you need to make sure there's enough room for everything to fit together without any overlap. If you're planning on top mounting the radiator, make sure there's enough space for the radiator, LCD, and motherboard VRMs to all coexist. There aren't a lot of cases that are gonna support this, so maybe cases like the 2500X from Corsair or Height's own cases with side mounting options might be the best. It's probably why you see the fans coming out of the box like they are knowing that it's probably where you're gonna have to mount this AIO. Unless you have like a giant forehead like on the Fantex NV7, which has room for days between the motherboard and the AIO. Oh, and also remember this, if you're planning on side mounting the Q60, make sure that there's enough depth or distance between your radiator and your GPU. You don't wanna basically sit there and try and put in your modern day GPU and be like, oh no, it's too long. So the 2500X from Corsair is a perfect example of a case that might work very, very well with an AIO like this. Thing number two, because of where the data cables connect to the Nexus hub, the orientation of the radiator is essential if you wanna keep your cabling clean. In a top mounted position, hoses need to face the case rear. And in a side mounted position, hoses need to go at the top of the loop in order to keep your connection hidden. Or, you could just be an agent of chaos and do whatever the heck you want. That's a choice too. Thing number three, the fans come pre-installed for air intake. So you'll wanna keep that in mind before installing the radiator. We typically recommend that you orient your AIO fans to exhaust 
in more traditional AIOs rather than pulling the air into your PC case. But this isn't an issue because really hype made it easy to flip these fans around, just pop out the screws, turn it over and you're done. But more than likely you're gonna be side mounting this and I think that's why hype consciously made this decision. So let's close this out. As an alternative to 360 millimeter AIOs, the Height Thick Q60 provides performance close enough to a 360 that we call it relatively competitive in the space. Here's the deal, guys. Chances are the cases that really come to mind when you think about putting this, this AIO in a case are Heights Y60 and Y40. And I, I actually don't think that's a coincidence. I mean, it's not really fair to call this a 240 millimeter AIO because of its unique fitment issues and the fact that it's 3.3 inches thick. You, if you're thinking about purchasing this AIO, really need to think about if this AIO will work in your build. If you're looking for an alternative to a 360 millimeter AIO, the thick Q60 is a unique AIO that solves some space issues while creating some others because of its size. But aside from the cooling potential, the Q60 has one of the most stunning displays that we've ever seen on an AIO. With bright colors, smooth motion, and a robust, albeit in-progress software suite, this one is going to be tough to top if you can work around what's unique about this AIO. So those were our thoughts on the height thick Q60, but we wanna know what you think down in the comments. What did you think about the size? Do you think of this as a 240 millimeter AIO? And can you think of cases that this might actually work in that aren't necessarily have the name height in the title? So let us know all that down below. Now, while you're down there, why don't you go ahead and slap that subscribe button with that like button and ring that notification bell so that you get a notification each and every time we post videos like this right here on Robitech. Also, if you have questions or you wanna know more about a build that you might be able to put this in, head over to discord.gg slash Amazing place to ask these questions to other like-minded tech and PC enthusiasts who'd love to help guide you through this. And you know what? You might make a friend. Also, you can follow me at Robitech absolutely everywhere. Thank you so much for watching this video and we look forward to seeing you on the next one.